One of our subscribers recently asked a really interesting question about duck goose hybrids. And I wanted to try to answer it today and talk to you about some of the weird things that we've seen here on our farm. But first, release the quacking! <laughs> Now before I start talking about duck and goose hybrids, let me talk about the difference between ducks and geese. So the geese are the bigger birds that you see here. You can notice they've got a slightly longer neck proportionally, and they've got sort of more of a triangular bill that's a little pointier and, and hits more higher up at the bridge of the nose. Versus the ducks, you see this one right here, or this one right over here, they've got a flatter bill, they're smaller, shorter neck, um, you know, di slightly different posture and body shape. So there really is a strong difference between ducks and geese. And when you look at some of our Pekin ducks, like Jemima Puddle Duck right here, it's not too hard to see how a duck like her would be related to a bird like our young pilgrim goose right here in the pool. But beyond the obvious visual differences, there's also many behavioral differences between ducks and geese. Oh, Samson. Really? Ducks are omnivores. They like a mixture of plants and insects and grains. Geese are primarily herbivores and their diet is mostly based on eating grass. Ducks quack, geese honk. And so to say that ducks and geese are interchangeable isn't quite the case either. But that's not to say that ducks and geese can't live together. Right here you actually see our interesting little flock that we have that I like to call the Parks and Rec Gang. The little duck, the little brown duck that you see there with these geese, her name is Ron Swanson, like the Parks and Rec character. We hatched these birds out all together at the same time earlier this spring. And they have been just one tight little flock ever since they were born. And even though Ron Swanson's only a duck, she hangs out pretty closely with these geese. And even though the Parks and Rec gang spends their time living with the ducks, when they get to go loose and be free during the day, they pretty much just stick to themselves. And sometimes they like to hang out with Toby. So I think for those of you studying the behavior of ducks and geese, what you'll notice there is, if raised together, ducks and geese can get along together and they can form one single flock. But don't read too much into it too, because ducks and geese and chickens can all form the same flock too if they're all raised together. And I don't think anybody's wondering out there if you can breed ducks and chickens together or geese and chickens together. Speaking of chickens. Rise and shine, girls. Morning, guys. Out of my way, Toby Toby. It's kind of tough to believe that just six weeks ago they looked like this. You see that? The moment I let them outside, they start looking for fresh grass. It's their favorite thing. They go crazy for it. They'll still eat corn, they'll still eat grain, but they love that fresh grass. Like even when I have them locked up at night in that house, there'll be like a whole bowl of grain for them. And they'll eat most of it. But then when you get them back outside and they're eating out on the pasture, they go crazy. But for those of you watching this video, I'm sure you're starting to get frustrated with me now because I'm still not answering that core question. Can you breed ducks and geese together to make cool hybrids? And when I say cool hybrids, I'm talking about things like 
pizzly bears, which are a combination of polar bear and grizzly bear, or zorses, which are a combination of zebras and horses. And then most famously, there's the liger. What's a liger? It's pretty much my favorite animal. Redford's skills and magic. Which is a combination of a tiger and a lion. And well, these special hybrid animals are able to be created because the families that the different animals are in are, are closely related. So for example, horses, zebras, and donkeys are all of the same genus. So even though they are different species, because they're in that same genus, it means that genetically speaking, they are close enough that they can be bred together. Oftentimes though, when, when you have uh, species that are very far apart, but of the same genus, they can breed together, but their offspring end up sterile, which is why mules never have children. So when it comes to waterfowl like ducks and geese and swans, they're actually all of the same subfamily of, uh, I think it's called Anatidae or Anatidae. Anatidae or Anatidae. And so they're all in that subfamily, but they're all of different genus as well. And so while they might look similar and behave similarly, and, and have a lot of characteristics that would suggest that you could breed them much like you breed a zebra and a horse or a polar bear and a grizzly bear. Genetically speaking, they're too far apart for it to ever work. So sadly, I've got to inform all of you that gucks and deuces are genetically speaking impossible to create, at least through the old natural way. That's not to say though that it hasn't been observed of, of ducks and geese actually mating. Um, people have seen it many times. And so I wouldn't be too surprised to see a romance breakout between Ron Swanson and, and our male gander. <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? You seem like you want something from me. What's going on? Why is everybody surrounding me? Good Lord, did you guys see this? I'm surrounded by geese right now. It's pretty intense. So yeah, that's three fresh eggs that just got laid this morning. I leave the grass tall for the geese so that they have food to eat, but unfortunately the ducks like to hide in it and lay their eggs. So if you're wondering what the challenge of keeping ducks and geese together is, uh, this is definitely one of them. All right, everybody out of the bushes, come on. Break up the potty, come on. I see you there, I see you there. There's Ron Swanson. Ron Swanson's even trying to lay some eggs in there. Picking up freshly laid eggs is one of the coolest feelings in the world. I feel like you haven't truly lived if you haven't had the opportunity to pick up a fresh egg. Toby, you are a muddy, muddy mess this morning. I know it rained last night. You just decide to roll in it? Aw, <laughs> uh, don't let me make fun of you. I love you, bud. I'll add these to my egg stash for the morning. Any others? Strag that was laying here. It's tough to believe these guys were just babies weeks ago. What a crazy flock right now. But don't worry, we still have some young ones on the farm. But let's head up to the brooder house to check it out. Yes, I'm talking about the little baby ducklings we have inside this brooder house. Shh, let's sneak up on them. Hey guys, how's it going? You're getting big already. Yeah, these are our latest batch of ducklings. We hatched out about 12 the other day. Um, as I've mentioned in a previous video, most of them are khaki Campbells, but we do have a couple of hybrid ducks here. So for example, this black duck right here is a khaki Campbell Cayuga Cross, much like Ron Swanson is. They're drinking more water, they're eating more food, they're pooping more. Oop, that one even seemed to jump over the barrier. Hey buddy. What you doing? You watching out for me or you watching out for those ducklings? How's it going? I move these girls, I don't know, every two days or so. Let them work on the land here. Give them a little bit of food. They will just do their thing. I haven't had much luck actually building out their palace. 
I've gotten sidetracked by a couple of things. It's supposed to rain today, um, but if it doesn't, I might actually try to make some progress in building out a run. My giant weed patch continues to grow strong. This was an experiment to see if I could simply grow corn and peas as feed for the animals. It's not working all that well. I got definitely some corn here. Some of it's getting pretty tall, but a lot of weeds as well. And so my hope is, as I continue to not touch this, that the crops I planted can outperform the weed that was uh, embedded in the compost that I got. It was supposed to be aged compost, but I gotta say, based on how weedy this stuff is, uh, <sighs> I don't think it was aged all that well. And yeah, let's uh, head on inside and we can go say hi to Little Barn Cat. So yeah, Little Barn Cat is recuperating quite nicely. Yeah. Aw. You healing up there, girl? You can see she's still got her scar back there. Still got her stitches in, but she's getting stronger and stronger. I can tell just by the way she's acting. She's eating a lot of food. She's doing pretty good. And she's confined to this crate for quite some time. And I'm really proud of how she's handling this whole situation. Yes, you are a fierce little warrior kitten. You knew that, right? Yeah. I did want to say thank you to you guys who have been sending us cards for Lil. I know she can't read, but she really does appreciate them, and Allison and I appreciate them too. So thank you for that. She's got to wear this cone for a while. She still wants to lick her wounds, and uh, it does not necessarily promote the right type of healing. I'll give her some of her favorite wet cat food. Come here, Lil. Here you go, sweetheart. Chow down. I don't know if you can hear this, but she is purring up a storm right now. Clean out your litter box while you eat your food. <laughs> I know, you don't like that. Yeah, the medicine is a little bit of a struggle still. <laughs> The crate is kind of a tough sentence for a cat who's such a fierce warrior, but unfortunately it's very necessary. But with just a little bit of time and a little bit of patience, I think she's going to heal up pretty darn well. <laughs>